Hi, welcome to a short video. In one of my early videos I turned a simple off-centre bowl. This video goes to the next stage and I'll be turning this off-centre winged bowl. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to use a piece of sporty beach for this bowl. Um, it's another piece of uh, uh, log that I rough cut a while back. So it's been on the lathe once just to turn it round and flatten one side off. First thing I'm going to do uh, is put it back on the lathe with the screw chuck. Just a couple of cuts around the edge just to square that up. Make sure this edge is flattened. And then I'm just going to cut in on this edge here to get rid of some of this uh, unevenness so I know where the, uh, the top edge is going to be. Next stage is to mark out where the wing, centre of the wing is going to be. Uh, there'll be a chucking point on the base of here, uh, so the overall height is going to be about 60, so a third of that's going to be about 20, so that's going to be the centre. Of the wing. The wing's going to be about 5mm thick when it's finished. What I'm going to do is initially mark that out slightly wider, so it'll be 5mm on each side of that line, giving us a 10mm thick wing. <laughs> what I'm now going to do is just cut away some of this waste wood on either side of the wing, just sufficient for me to be able to sand the ed this edge of the wing. The thing with off-centre turning is you've got to sand and finish the piece as you go along when the, the piece you, you're working on is actually on centre like this part is here. And the reason I've done it slightly thicker is that when we turn the bowl it just gives me enough wood to do some finishing cuts before we, we, we finish the sides of the, uh, uh, the wing. sufficient profile there for me to sand this without having to sand all the, the side pieces. <coughs> I'm going to do an oil finish on this one I've done so at this stage all I'm going to do is sand it to 400 grit and as I want a square edge on here I'm going to use only sanding pads and I'm going to use the firm side on here to give this a fair so I've got fairly even uh, pressure on to, to sand it. I've sanded this edge up now which will be the edge of the uh, the wing on the bowl. <coughs> I've now drilled a second hole for the screw chuck that is offset. 15 millimeters between centers on these. I'm using an 8 millimeter screw chuck so that gives sufficient wood in between the two holes so that it doesn't collapse. So I'm now going to mount it back onto the lathe with the in, on the new hole and then we're going to start turning the bowl on the bottom of the uh, uh, the piece. Next thing I'm going to do is mark out the rough diameter of the bowl on this bottom section. And that enables me to get rid of some of the waste wood so the piece is not quite so off centre. So if we'll just start by marking a rough circle here. I think we'll probably just go a little bit smaller than that which would give a wing size here of about half an inch and obviously much larger size on the other side. I'm going to bring the tailstock up to put some support with this being uh, sort of centre and then we're just going to look at getting rid of some of this, this waste wood down this side. Now 
one thing that can happen, and has in this case, when you drill the second hole for the uh, off centre mount of the screw chuck, if you don't get it exactly parallel with the first one, which in this case it isn't, even though I faced this off and I drilled it with a pillar drill, uh, it can be slightly off and it doesn't take much. And as you can see here, uh, this is, I've turned this down to the edge of the uh, the wing that we sanded earlier. We you go around to the other side of the piece, there's still a few millimetres left. And it doesn't take it much to be out much and you then get uh, quite a large uh, in proportion uh, offset here which is another reason to leave this initial piece for the wing slightly wider because I'll just turn this down till this comes to the wing and that will just cut part of this off and when I finish you'll, you'll still have a, about a five millimeter wing just at a slightly different angle That'll be fine for the moment. I uh, will need to take another couple of finishing cuts off, but at this stage, that's taken the bulk of the uh, the way. So this is more uh, centrally balanced now, and we've only got off some uh, excess weight on this side here. The next piece to do is mark out the tenon that we're going to hold. The, uh, the piece in the chuck on and then we can start turning the outside shape of this piece of the bowl here. It's a fairly small bowl this and I want it to be fairly rounded so I'm going to use a set of jaws that have a 40mm tenon on and that means I can get the bulk of the shape of this piece done uh, without taking up too much room for the, uh, the tenon. And I'm going to shape this fairly rounded as when the piece is finished because of the wing what I want it to do is sit and then find its own balance point on its base rather than have a foot that it will sit square on. So we'll get the bulk of this outside turned along with the tenon the final shaping of the outside we'll do when we reverse mount this again after we've finished the top and turn the inside of the bowl out. The outside of the the bowl turned. I just used a spindle gouge just to get into this corner and here to make a neat uh, sharp change in direction. Uh, it's just a little bit easier doing that uh, due to the grind on it. What we'll do now is we'll sand the outside of the bowl and the underside of the wing. Uh, the bowl I can do with a lathe turning torch with problem. This section <coughs> obviously not uh, particularly easy to do with a lathe turning as you can quite easily uh, catch yourself so I shall just get uh, my drill out and power sand this around the edge here. We've sanded the bowl and the underside of the wing to 400 grit. Now what we'll do is reverse this round and mount it on this spigot here so we can start turning the top side. I've now mounted the piece in a set of 40mm O'Donnell jaws. Next step is to take this excess rough wood off the top surface here of the bowl down to this level which will be the level of the top edge of the bowl. Now 
want to do is mark out where the roof outside of the top of the bowl is going to be so I can then get rid of some of this excess wood. So looking down on the piece and just following the curve and I'll just go a little bit further outside than to where it's going to end up being. That inner circle is where the main part of the bowl is going to be. What we'll do, just like we do on the underside of the bowl, is we'll now get rid of some of this excess wood around here, down to where the wing is going to be, and then we can finish reshaping the outside of the top section of the bowl. the outside shaped and I've just put a slight curve around here so that the bowl sort of follows around. What we need to do now is start hollowing out the centre. I'm going to do the first part down to the depth of the wing and I need the wall on this section here to be parallel all the way through so it's going to be the same thickness all the way through and that's the when I later on I cut this so that was there is a, <coughs> an angle on here then you expose the wall at different depths if it's not the same thickness all the way through you get wide spots and narrow spots So that's now a fairly even wall thickness going all the way down to the the wing. Next stage is to haul out the rest of the bowl. <coughs> I just need to remember that I'm going to curve around the base of this slightly so I don't want to go too deep when I uh, hollow this out. the inside of the bowl hollowed out now. Uh, <coughs> what they'll do next is I'll sand the inside, sand the outside, those can be done with the, the lathe running and then with the lathe off I'll just power sand around the, the wing. I'm not too bothered about this top surface here at the moment as I'm going to be cutting some of that away so we'll finish that top surface off when we do that. I sanded the inside of the bowl and the top edge of the uh, wing now and I now reverse mounted this in a set of button jaws uh, with a bit of matting underneath so we don't uh, scratch any of the surfaces. What I'm going to do now is take this 
chucking point off and curve the base round so that hopefully the ball will then find its own natural position to sit on the, uh, the on the edge. Obviously being careful not to take too much of this off and go through the bottom of the ball. If you wish at this stage you could just turn this uh, chucking point into a foot and finish the ball at that stage. the base off now we'll just re-sand all this section down to 400 grit. I've sanded the base off and again you can leave this as a finished piece if you wish. What I'm going to do though is angle the top section of the ball uh, down from one side to the other. So the high point is going to be on the widest part of the wing and the lowest point on the narrowest part. So what I've done is just mark on the top of the rim the, the narrowest part of the, uh, the wing and then taking standard centre finder and I've just gone across and marked the top piece there which is going to be the high point. I've also on here decided this is going to be the height of the low section so it will be the low section going round to a high point on here. What we've then done with a scrap piece of wood is turned uh, basically a very simple jam chuck, although it's not a tight jam chuck. I'll be using some non slip matting, and what will happen is we'll put this in here and we'll angle the piece across at the angle that I want the final cut to be at, and then we can gradually take this rim down to the right shape. And with tail stock, I've got uh, one of these uh, revolving centres with a changeable tip. This is a small face plate tip on here and what I've done is just made a small down piece of wood that's screwed onto it and we'll use that to position in the centre here to hold this in place in the, uh, uh, in the jam truck and again I'm just going to use a piece of uh, non-slip matting folded over so again we don't uh, damage the inside face. Once we loosely put that in position, what we then need to do is get it centralised as best we can and at the right angle. So low point is here. I'm just turning the piece around and that's fairly central although I'm not going to come up to this top part here. So what I need to do is just angle this slightly, start tightening the uh, tailstock up to hold it in place. And what I quite often find is that this is just slightly offset. It's just the way it sits in your uh, the jam chuck. You can spend time trying to reshape the jam chuck a bit more, uh, but I think this will probably do at the moment. So what I'm then going to do just needs to be a little bit further round. So starting at the mark that I made on here, put the pencil on, follow it round. I 
and that nearly takes us up to this top edge here and down to this mark here so that's going to be the angle that we'll cut across we'll do this with ball gouge just taking very very fine cuts because we don't want to uh, have the the ball move whilst we're doing this until we get down to the uh, the, the depth and the shape that we want make sure that when you're putting your tail stock your tool rest in place you get as close as you can but make sure you don't hit this wing that should be okay And then we have the, the angled rim, uh, got quite a bit of a rough piece here uh, where the bit of spalting is, it was a bit softer and it's just flaking away a little bit there. But I'll sand this rim up and we should be able to get rid of that and then that will be the piece finished. And here we have the finished piece. I've sanded off the rim and I've given it two coats of Hampshire Sheen Danish oil. There's some detailed photographs coming up at the end of the video and as you'll see on the pictures the ball sits with the rim horizontal and the wing at an angle. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it of use. If you did please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and if you've got any questions or queries just get in touch with me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching.